I'm switching from the iPhone 15 Pro to the new Google Pixel 8 Pro. I'm about to give up iMessage, my AirPods, and the Apple Watch Ultra for this. But to make it a fair test, we have the new Pixel Watch and the Pixel Buds Pro also here. It's 10.30 a.m. I'm so stoked about this phone. And the day starts now with ordering some iced coffee and hot coffee to test out this. This is a new thermometer. This is one of the new hardware features on the Pixel 8 Pro. There are a bunch of them that will go throughout the day. I also brought a regular thermometer so we have a baseline test of both. So opening up the thermometer app on the phone, I then hit object temperature and I can select from a bunch of different material choices. For this one, I'll do beverages. And then you hold it within like two, five centimeters or two inches. You tap to measure. So this is 130 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll take out our thermometer for a contrast test. Wow, the real life thermometer is struggling. That's weird, right? Okay, there we go. I wonder if it doesn't do over 99. We'll come back to that in a second, but let's do the cold one. So you see though, if I redo it again, it always gives a slightly different reading depending on how close or far away you are. So it's a relative check, but not an exact measurement. Odd that this one didn't work. I'm thinking maybe there's like a limited range on most thermometers. And the difference is with the Pixel 8 Pro, it's a object thermometer because in order to have a human thermometer, you actually need FDA approval. So I think Google is planning to do that for the future, pending FDA approval. And for now, it's an object temperature sensor, which I think is really cool to know like if a drink is too hot or if you're trying to cook something at a certain temperature. But in this example, you can see that there is a huge fluctuation depending on how close you are. So it's not the most accurate, but it will give you a range. The Pixel 8 Pro has a 6.7 inch display that's fast, it's beautiful. The iPhone 15 Pro has a dynamic island as the main form of like interacting with the phone in order to hide the camera and the face ID sensors. The Pixel 8 Pro just has a little circular cutout at the top. It has seemed like iPhone has the superior ecosystem for a very long time with iMessage support, with the way all their devices work together. And I think that Google is the Android manufacturer that is catching up the most and very quickly. For like the last six or seven years, they focused a lot on software with the camera, but this feels like the first year that they're really focusing on hardware. Off to the subway. Beautiful day in New York, officially in the best time of the year. It's my favorite season. The perfect time to mention that the new Pixel 8 Pro has more visibility on its display as well. So in a bright sunlight environment, very much still see the display. The iPhone 15 Pro also has a really bright screen. So if we look at them next to each other, they both look really, really bright. They're also both dynamic refresh rates, so they feel pretty quick as well. It's 12.24 PM and the Pixel 8 Pro's battery is at 98%. It has a 5,000 million power battery, which is actually great. So I have high hopes for the battery life. On the iPhone 15 Pro, I just reviewed it a few weeks ago, Battery life is okay. I'm a very heavy smartphone user, so I can normally kill most phones in a day because I do a lot of video, photography, navigation, etc. So that will be something with this switch that we'll test to see if the Pixel 8 Pro is better. Phone looks really sharp, especially for the five times zoom. So the iPhone 15 Pro has three X zoom on the regular one and then five X on the Pro Max, which is like the one that's similar size to the A Pro. We're gonna test out the camera features a little bit later in this video, but that is a huge, really nice feature that the Pixel 8 Pro has. And it's using both optical and digital machine learning photosynthesization to create like the highest quality, sharpest image. On the personalization front, I honestly feel like iPhone has learned a lot from the customization of Android. iOS 17 feels the closest to Android 14 it's ever felt. It will intuitively look at what colors you have in your wallpaper and then universally apply that to the UI throughout. You can add in different controls for notifications you want. And in terms of ecosystem, the phone quickly pairs with headphones and watches and it will show you the battery life of both on your phone. Tech innovates so quickly that it's really hard to notice how big the leap is. But I think it's important to look back. Like 2006 was the year that Google Translate came out, but 2006 was also the year that Facebook launched for the first time. And in that span of time since then, Google Translate then in 2010 came out and worked on the phone. And now we have this live transcription feature built right into the recorder app. And I think that it is a huge feature for a students, like you record a lecture and then eventually Google will implement summarization, like quickly going through the whole transcript and summarizing it. Or if you're a reporter or someone that is constantly listening to very detail oriented things, like anytime I go to a phone briefing, this would be great. And it works seamlessly, which just makes me excited about the future of translation features.
One of the things I'm noticing right now is that the iPhone definitely still has the best color consistency among its lenses. This will be most prevalent if we do it as a video. So this is like switching between the three lenses on the back and the color tone stays almost the same among all of them. One of the features that Google is saying that they're going to add later this year is actually bizarre, but very cool. Photos or videos will upload directly from this phone to Google servers. They'll adjust the colors and then put them back on your phone. That's coming later. So that could definitely help this color consistency issue. But I think that this is something that iPhone just does unmatched in video. Photo, it's a much more fair battle because Google's image processing for photos is excellent. Um, and also this year, the Google Pixel front-facing camera has been updated to now have autofocus. So that's something that you would notice switching from the iPhone to the Pixel. It now has that photo quality on the selfies looks great. And it has a new feature also called Best Take, which is using the AI, and that's like the bigger theme of this phone. To me, this is like the smartest phone on the market, and that theme is going to keep playing out. But Best Take basically will synthesize multiple shots of multiple people and then pick the best looking version of each person and combine it into one photo. So let's say you take a photo, someone's eyes are closed, someone else looks great, and then in the next photo, it's the reverse situation, you now have the perfect shot all in one, the best take. That's really cool. Other camera AI features, there's a magic eraser, which is incredible. So you can highlight something on a photo and seamlessly get rid of it. It works really, really well. There's now also a new feature that uses generative AI to replace a sky. Audio editor is another one where it can figure out different layers of audio, like your speaking voice versus the ambience versus like a baby screaming in the back and help you make the audio cleaner by getting rid of background noise. The other AI features that this has that the iPhone 15 Pro doesn't is call screener, which can pick up a phone call for you and screen if it's worth your time, book a reservation for you. In my testing, I found that that doesn't always work, but sometimes it's an option. And there will eventually be the ability to summarize a whole web page. But as you're setting up the phone, it would be a nice addition if it walked you through how to use some of the new AI features so people could really harness the power of Google. Love that place so much. In the past, the Pixel lineup has been very camera-centric from a software perspective, and that's really where it's come alive. Like, Pixel is some of the best photo processing on the market by far. I feel like a lot of their advertisements are about that. This year, they've also updated the hardware, so all of the main lenses now allow more light in, which leads to a shallower depth of field and also just higher image quality. The iPhone 15 Pro also had its camera hardware updated this year, and it actually has more lens diversity. Like you can shoot at 24 millimeters, 28 millimeters, and 35 millimeters, all on that primary 48 megapixel. One of the things that Marquez noticed in his review, that what it notices when you're taking like a selfie video, it will light up your skin a little bit and make it more processed. iPhone, in my opinion, still has the better video quality just in terms of stabilization, color consistency, et cetera but it's getting really close. And what the Pixel beats the iPhone with, in my opinion, is the diversity of modes and options that are offered within having video mode on the phone. When it gets darker out, we'll continue this photo test by testing out some night photos. It is now 7.38 p.m. nighttime. The phone is at 69%. I've been on conference calls, honestly, for most of the rest of the day, so pretty light phone usage, but got back out to take some photographs and night photography. For video quality, it still feels like the iPhone has like the best in class video. Like if I was gonna buy one smartphone and video quality was the most important feature to me, I would get the 15 Pro. Especially because also on social media apps, they're definitely still better optimized on iPhone. Like Instagram just runs smoother. It's getting better over the years, but Android still doesn't have the best optimization for social media apps. But for photo quality, the Pixel is so enticing because of all the AI features. This feels like the smartest phone on the market and that extends into the camera with all the photo editing and it's only gonna get more and more because this phone now has seven years of software updates and I'm expecting Google to continue to push out new ways to use the camera and harness the software ability. That said, the iPhone 15 Pro also has exceptional photo quality. So the actual factor that I would really think about when switching in the US is actually iMessage. Outside of the US, this is like a significantly less big deal, but in the US, it is a very big social and ecosystem lock-in feature. And if you wanna learn more about that situation, or hear my thoughts on it, you can check out this video right here. I'm so stoked about the Pixel 8 Pro. It feels like a really big year for them of nailing the hardware and the software into a really compelling buy. I hope you found this video informative and energizing, and I'll see you in the iMessage video here or another one right here.